here is a circle with radius 5 and it's located at the point 0, 05 and it's going to be a physical thing like a bicycle wheel and it's going to roll to the right now to roll to the right the wheel has to go uh, clockwise and I want to see what happens as it goes to the right here's a red point that's on the wheel and as the wheel goes to the right that red point is going to make a, a curve and that curve is going to look something like that and then it's going to start over that curve is called a cycloid and this video is going to show you how to get the equation of, of the cycloid now imagine that instead of moving to the right the wheel was just going around in a circle well that's kind of from last video that would be x equals um, x equals 5 cosine uh, we'd have to say negative t plus 270 that would cause it to start at 270 and the negative t is so that the point can go counter so, so the point can go clockwise and y equals 5 sine negative t plus 270 so the fives oh and we also need a, a plus 5 here because the center is always the, the, the center is not zero zero the center is um, is zero five that, that's that's for this green circle so it would start here whoops start here and go around and get back to there but this red curve is different from that it's not a circle it's this strange half ellipse looking thing called a cycloid and the, the way we make that happen is we add on to the x value you see the path of the center. Um, the center of the circle starts here at 0, 5 and it goes steadily to the right until it ends up over there. So if we know what this distance is we can say uh, t over 360 times whatever this distance is. If I knew the distance I would just put it in there if it was 10 for instance. Um, it would be t over 360 times 10 that way. The t over 360 is kind of like a percentage, like how, what percent of my journey have I accomplished as I kind of move steadily to the right. Because as the wheel rolls, maybe this isn't totally obvious, but the center makes a straight line. And the, the path of the center is, uh, sort of goes at a steady rate from sort of 0, 5 up to something 5. But that's something, it's not so obvious but I'll tell you that the distance that a wheel if it's actually physically on the ground and rolling the distance that it that it travels is equal to the circumference of of the wheel so in this case it's 10 pi and the reason why that is if I imagine the wheel starts to roll or imagine it's like a hula hoop and I cut it right here and then I kind of stretch out the green till it comes to the end that would be 10 pi and then I kind of release it and, and it kind of winds around that way okay however you understand it you should know that the point on the wheel this point by the time that point makes it back onto the ground it will have traveled to the right the center will have traveled whatever the circumference is, is to the right so it's 10 pi Maybe that's a little hard to see, so I'll write it up again. So it's it's x equals five cosine negative t plus two seventy plus t. I like to use degrees, so t over three sixty times ten pi, and the y value is five sine negative t plus two seventy, and then just plus five because the y coordinate of that point is always five. That's really almost all that can be said about the cycloid. I guess the only other possibility is that the cycloid again starts at 0, 5, but now it's going to go uh, counterclockwise instead. Well, that's still going to be a 10, a 10 pi change in the x coordinate, 
but I get, and I'll, I'll still track that point. So x, y, the x is 5 cosine. But now I can say positive t because I'm going clockwise. So clockwise is positive. And it's still plus 270 because I'm starting at the bottom here. And I have to then do t over 360. Oops, it's not plus though. It's minus times 10 pi. That way it gets more, this is, this is 0, 5. So I want to get to 0, uh, sorry, to negative 10 pi comma 5. And that's why this must be a minus. The only difference for the y value is it's t instead of negative t, but it's still plus 270. So I'm starting at the bottom, but I'm going clock. Uh, oh, I just realized this this should be minus, and this should be minus. Sorry, that one is positive because it's rolling to the left. And rolling to the left is accomplished by it going, by the points going counterclockwise. So that's why there's a plus there. Compare that to this one, where there's a minus here, because the points are going clockwise. And that uh, is, is cycloids. I guess I could throw one more thing. It's not quite a cycloid. 0, 5, 0, 5, 0, 5. It's, it is a wheel rolling to the right. But now, instead of using the points at the bottom, I'm going to use the point over here at 0, 2. That's going to make some kind of some kind of different looking thing that's not exactly a cycloid. Okay, the trick to that one is that the 0, 2 is on a smaller circle that has radius 3. So that, and here Here's that circle, and here's the big one. So we have x equals, y equals. This one is going to the right, so it's clockwise. But we need a 3 here, because the circle that that point is on has radius 3. So it's 3 cosine negative t plus 270, and 3 sine negative t plus 270. The y, the center here, is always 5. But here it's a little sneaky. The the distance that this travels, the center is the same as it traveled for the for the regular cycloid. So that 10 pi is still that. So it's still t over 360 times 10 pi. It is not t over 360 times 6 pi. The the circumference of this wheel doesn't matter. It's because the wheel that's rolling on the ground is the outer one. So that so the center of the inner of the big circle and the little circle are the same. And um, that thing is called like a, a curate trochoid, I think. I, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but that's how I would describe it as uh, a point on a moving wheel, not on the circumference of that wheel. Okay, that takes care of the cycloid and a um, related curve.